Hello and welcome to the launch of the 2021 Southall Music Festival here in the glorious surroundings of Southall Minster. I'm delighted that we are joined by a very, very small audience of some of our closest festival friends. Um, I'm very sorry that we couldn't have all of our festival friends here, but the restrictions are just too tight at the moment. I'd also like to welcome all those of you who are watching online via our live stream, the first time we've actually done anything quite like this. And huge thanks to the Dean and Chapter here at the Minster for hosting us this evening uh, and also for allowing us to use their swanky new streaming system. Thank you so much. Uh, I thought it would be good for us to start with some music, and I'm delighted that my old friend and director of music here at the Cathedral, Paul Provost, is here to play um, these songs with me. And I thought we should start with the entirely appropriate Andy Musik by Schubert, where the poet Schober speaks of how music and its power to heal takes him through the most tumultuous occasions in his life. I think we all know exactly how that feels now. So this is Schubert's Andy Music. I should say, for those of you on the stream, I have to do a little bit of a walk back over here to the performing position. So just bear with me as I move between these two stations over the next 40 minutes. Thank you. 
It's wonderful to sing in this building again. <laughs> I thought I might just outline some of the musical highlights of the festival, as I know that's what we're all here to find out about. And in terms of the format, there will be some things that are slightly different, obviously, uh, because most importantly, we have to make sure that as we return to live performance here in this glorious space and in the other spaces in the town, we want you to feel safe. That does mean, of course, that there will be restrictions on numbers, and that obviously means that tickets will be going like hotcakes, I think, more than ever before, um, and there will be restrictions. Uh, but we've put some things in place to try and mitigate that. Uh, the format in terms of the layout of the concerts is a mixture of the familiar and the unfamiliar, and that goes for the repertoire too. As you know, we like to mix it up. We give you lots of standard repertoire pieces that are well known, but we also like to throw a light onto new work and things that are slightly less well known. It's a mixture of chamber music, choral music, song, opera, jazz. We've got a couple more jazz events this year um, and folk events as well. Not so many really large ensembles as we've had in the past. Unfortunately, the days of the dream of Grontius and us all absolutely crammed onto the stage together with nowhere to move, we're not quite there yet. Maybe one day, but not, not just yet. But despite that, still a very, very wide range of music. We will also be using one of our venues, which has previously mainly been used as a fringe venue, the Methodist Church, will become a main part of the program. And there'll be some concerts in there that are designed to make the most of that beautiful space with its Wesleyan Chapel style seating arrangement. Uh, we've got some um, new chamber concerts happening in there, some of which will be focusing on repertoire that we've never touched at the festival before, which is music for voice and guitar with the wonderful Mark Eden who's joining us, a fantastic solo guitarist. A festival favourite and someone who is well known to all of those of you here, pianist all-round musical genius Libby Burgess uh, will be bringing her Project 48 to the festival. Some of you may have read about this online. Libby is performing the whole of Bach's well-tempered clavier in every county in England, all 48 of them, over the course of this year. And her Nottinghamshire performances are going to be divided into two. So. The first one will take place as part of the festival. She will be performing book one over three mornings and raising money for musical charities in the process. So you can hear uh, Libby basically having breakfast with Bach over three mornings in the Methodist church. You'll see that in your, in your brochures. We'll also be welcoming back the amazing improvising musician Kit Downs in a completely different format to how he was here last time up on the organ and playing with the, uh, the folk fiddler Aidan O'Rourke. This time he's here with a jazz vocalist Lauren Kinsella and they'll be giving a late night concert in the Methodist Church. Uh, Lauren is a sort of folk influenced um, improvising jazz musician. She is a wonderful, wonderful singer and she and Kit will be exploring the music of Paul Motion, the jazz drummer. Lauren has written some of her own lyrics for some of these tunes that Paul Motion wrote, and which she'll be performing those in the Methodist Church. I'm also very pleased to say that the Marquee will be back. It was very, very popular in 2019. Uh, and we'll also be using it as a, as a venue. We're going to have some jazz in there over the Sunday uh, lunchtime between Eucharist and Evensong. And that's with a, a local jazz trumpet player, Hugh Pascal, who will be known to some of you in the audience. He is based in Nottingham. We actually used to play in the uh, county big band together when we were teenagers. Um, Hugh has gone on to do really great things on the jazz scene nationally and internationally, and he'll be bringing his quartet to the marquee. But on to our main performance space, this beautiful building that we're standing in now. There'll be a wide range of events in here, and for obvious reasons, a few more concerts in the nave and fewer in the choir, and we won't be in the crossing this year, but we will, we will return in future years, I'm sure. Uh, but just to keep everything safe and, and laid out securely for everybody, that's what we've decided to do this time. We'll have a festival folk concert in here on the Saturday lunchtime with Donald Grant, who's an amazing, award-winning Scottish fiddler, also a violinist in, in the Elias Quartet. He's a very versatile musician, and he'll be here playing with some of our, our festival musicians. The Opera Gala 
will take place in here on the first evening of the festival and will be part of the main program. We decided to put it into the nave in order to ensure as many people as possible could enjoy that because that's become a very popular part of our fringe program in previous years. We'll also be introducing two new lunchtime concerts in here as part of the festival, one o'clock classics featuring some big chamber works, works by Clara Schumann, Brahms String Sextet, Schubert's Octet, which is a piece that we've wanted to do at the festival for some time. And I'm also absolutely delighted that our celebrity recital this year, which will also take place in the nave, this time on the Sunday evening, will be given by the well-known baritone Roderick Williams, who was due to perform for us in 2020, uh, and we're very, very pleased that we've, we managed to uh, get him here in 2021 as a replacement recital for that. So. Uh, so he's got a wonderful recital lined up for us for the festival. There will also be lots of familiar things happening. We will be doing strings in the choir. We won't be able to fit as many people in as we would like to, so we will be repeating that concert as we have done in previous years. We'll also have an organ recital, the very first thing that happens in the festival, on the Wednesday lunchtime here, on the choir organ, but people seated all around the cathedral, and that is given by former Assistant Director of Music, now Director of Music at Chester Cathedral, Philip Rushforth. Delighted to be welcoming Philip back to Southall for the festival. Our late night concerts will continue. And as well as uh, chamber music, we'll be having Shostakovich's piano quintet in here as one of our late night concerts. We will also have our very, very popular late night choral concert with words and music, um, and a little bit more about that in a second. The Saturday concert, which is, as you know, usually the focal point of the festival, will still be the focal point of the festival, and that is a performance of Bach's Magnificat with the Festival Baroque and the Festival Voices. We will also be performing Brandenburg's fourth concerto as part of that concert, his cantata, Ich habe genug, but I will tell you a little bit more about that concert later on. Back to our late night choral concert, we're going to be focusing on music by female composers, some of whom are perhaps well known to you, some of whom will not be known well enough at all. So we've got a themed concert of female composers from throughout the ages with a number of works by a very important English composer who is celebrating her 70th birthday this year, Cecilia McDowell. And that leads me on to our next item of music. I thought it would be nice to introduce you to some music by Cecilia. And this is one of her songs from a set of settings by Dylan Thomas. This is Here in This Spring.
Thank you. As you know, at every festival since our very first one in 2014, we have put young artists right at the center of what we do. Uh, and we are doing exactly the same thing on a slightly more expanded sort of scheme this year. We actually have a series of young artists concerts running throughout the festival. We will be bringing back our wonderful festival apprentices, both our string apprentices and our vocal apprentices, and they will be sharing a lunchtime concert. We will also be welcoming the winner of Nottingham Young Musician of the Year, and I'm delighted to continue that association with that competition. And this is actually the person who won the competition in 2019 and was due to give a recital in 2020, so I'm really, really pleased that we're able to give these young musicians the opportunities that they have missed so much over the last year. We will also be welcoming some vocal students from Cheatham School of Music, the Specialist Music School in Manchester, to give a concert. That'll be some of the, the levers from this year's um, vocal department. So a wide range of young artist program things going on there. The young artists and our apprentices are a key part and they, of course, will be mentored by our very own festival musicians, the festival chamber soloists, the festival baroque ensemble, and also the wonderful festival voices. We will be giving a family concert once more, and this will happen down at the school, and we hope to repeat this concert in order that we can ensure as many people as possible can come and enjoy themselves and take part in that concert. It will be a performance of Saint-Saëns Carnival of the Animals, we will not be doing craft before the concert this year, as we have done in previous years, just because for our, our COVID regulations, we think it's a, a little bit too complicated. So we would like to invite our younger audience members and maybe their grown-ups to come in animal-themed fancy dress or to make animal costumes. I'm very much hoping that every single member of the festival committee will step up on this particular mark. I'm looking forward to your costumes. We will be running our festival fringe and I'm absolutely delighted that we'll be keeping that going throughout uh, the festival this year. Now the concerts will remain free with a retiring collection for this year's fringe charity. Those free concerts that happened in the Methodist Church you will need to book for them just because of the regulations that are in place. They are still free but they will need to be booked but Concerts that happen outdoors will, will not need to be booked for. On the bank holiday Monday, the very final day of the festival, it has been our practice to have a come and sing for our amateur singers from around the East Midlands. Now, we don't know at the moment exactly what the restrictions are going to be regarding amateur singing at the tail end of August. As I said, in COVID terms, three months away from now is a very, very long way. So we will wait to see exactly what the restrictions are before we announce what we're going to do. But I very much hope that on the Bank Holiday Monday, we will be able to run some kind of community singing event. I think it will be a wonderful thing for us all to do together. So please just watch this space and, uh, and we'll see what happens as the guidance is updated over the coming weeks and months. Now, as I've said already, because of the limited venue capacity, a number of concerts are repeated. And this year, that also goes for our Saturday concert, our Bach Magnificat. We are going to be performing that on Saturday afternoon and on Saturday evening. The Saturday afternoon concert will be slightly shorter 
and there will be no interval in order just to facilitate all the different changes that need to happen and the cleaning and things that need to happen between the, the different concerts. Also, not to completely wreck our musicians who will be doing the, the programme twice in a day very close together. Um, but the afternoon concert, I've been told to ensure that everybody knows that the marquee will still be open and you will be able to go there for a drink after the concert, even though there is no interval in that particular concert in the afternoon. And as I say, as well as the Bach Magnificat, we've got Bach's Brandenburg Concerto Number no. 4, Ich habe genug, his cantata for solo baritone and solo oboe, and also in the evening concert, our festival voices will be performing Bach's motet, Zingit dem Herrn. We have decided that we will stream some of our concerts this year so that as many people as possible can share in this wonderful music making and in this glorious venue. Uh, we haven't decided yet exactly which concerts we will stream. Again, it depends on where we are with capacities and things come late August. So please watch this space and we'll let you know which ones of those we are going to stream. I'd like to move on to another piece of music now. And this I have chosen simply because it is a beautiful piece to sing and it's very fitting for this building and this time of the evening. This is Purcell's Evening Hymn in the realization of the piano part by Benjamin Britten.
Thank you. Now, on to some very, very important information about ticketing, which is something that is very different this year for obvious reasons, as we have already outlined. Now, our festival friends, our nearest and dearest, will get priority booking, but due to venue capacities being reduced, we are limiting all ticket bookers to purchasing a maximum of two tickets per concert in the programme. Audience members will be seated in pairs or singles if booking one ticket, and if you book online, you will be able to view a seating plan for each concert and select your preferred seats. And we hope that audiences can understand the challenges faced this year to ensure concerts are safe and enjoyable and why we have had to implement this ticket limit. Once booking opens online, you can book obviously online or by calling the box office. We will not be processing postal bookings this year, but should you require assistance, if you don't wish to book online, then please do just get in, in touch by calling the box office. They are very, very friendly and really helpful. So if you don't want to do the online thing, then please this year use the phones. Um, this year we will not be selling tickets at the Minster shop. Um, but last minute returns can be pur purchased at the festival hub during the week of the festival. And for those of you who remember from uh, the, the festival in 2019, the festival hub was just over there to the south of where we are, where we are now. Uh, and the festival hub will be still the absolute central point of everything that happens during the festival week. There is still time to join the festival friends or upgrade an existing membership if you would like to. You can join online via the website. And you can also become a platinum friend. This is not a whole new group of people that have suddenly appeared from nowhere. These people were previously known as sponsors, and we have just renamed them to make it clear that they are very much a part of the friends scheme. So we have platinum friends, gold friends, silver friends, and bronze friends. I would like to first of all just say a few thank yous this evening before we move to our final piece of music. I would like to thank Paul Provost for playing so beautifully this evening uh, and also for putting all of this together with me at, with very, very little rehearsal time. Uh, and of course, I must thank the Dean and Chapter and everyone here at Southall Minster for hosting us so wonderfully. Uh, and we really, really look forward to renewing our collaboration together at this year's festival. And last but by no means least, I must say a huge thank you to all of our festival friends. The vast majority of you were so kind and decided to pay your memberships for 2020 despite the fact that we didn't have any festival at all and we couldn't even have a Christmas concert. And that support really has kept us on the road. I cannot emphasize that enough, and we are so grateful to you for your continued support. This festival is a community-inspired and driven event, and the festival friends are absolutely at the heart of that. So, for anybody out there on the stream who is listening now, who is not a friend, please come and join these wonderful people, uh, join the party. I should also add a little note of caution, I suppose, which is for this year, as I've already said, the limited number of tickets will mean that you will not necessarily have the choice of tickets that you might like to have uh, because of the restrictions and festival friends will get priority booking so if you're really really keen to come to all the concerts which i hope you are then i would highly recommend that you become a festival friend in order to get that priority booking period it's been a very very odd year for all of us I mean, odd is putting it mildly. Um, it's been an especially uh, difficult year for everyone in the performing arts, and we cannot wait to welcome back our wonderful musicians to the festival. I'm very sad that we can't have as many musicians here as we would have had in a normal year, and I look forward to building back to capacity um, in the future so that we can perhaps get back to a place where we can pack the stage for an Elgar oratorio uh, and, and have everybody cheek by jowl in the nave and also in the choir and the crossing as well. But we're not quite there yet. Whatever happens, I think this summer's sharing of music 
is going to be one of the most special events that we have hosted and put on as an organization. I think it's going to be wonderful to come together again and to share in the joy of music, in our common humanity, and to really celebrate everything that there is to celebrate, and also to be together to remember those who we have lost over the last year. It's been a very, very, very difficult year for so many of us. And I hope that the music that we provide at the festival can help you to celebrate and also help you to heal, because I think we all need to do some of that right now. I would like to finish this evening with one more piece of music, a really joyous piece of music and something that's absolutely appropriate for the late spring, early summer weather, which has finally turned up. And this is one of Finzi's songs from his cycle, Let Us Garlands Bring. This is his Shakespeare setting, It Was a Lover and His Lass. See you. 